Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to episode number 399 of No DQ&A Video. This is the post WWE TLC edition of No DQ&A Video. A very eventful pay-per-view. We finally have a unified champion for the first time since Chris Jericho, but according to WWE, 50 years or whatever. I mean, just lame stuff right there. But uh, anyways, we do have a unified champion. Got a lot of questions here, so let's get started. First one today from Clarky Boy 123 what did you think of TLC? Overall, I definitely give it a thumbs up. I thought that John Cena versus Randy Orton was a very good match. It delivered. I give WWE credit for having a clean finish. I don't think a lot of people were expecting that. A lot of people were actually expecting Triple H to somehow leave with both titles. But no, Randy Orton beat John Cena clean in the TLC match. And I like the spot they did with the handcuffs. I thought that that was creative on the part of WWE, although it made it a tables, ladders, chairs, handcuffs, steel steps match. Uh, but, you know, it was cool to have that, and it was a way to um, add to the match and make it uh, more intense and, and uh, you know, keep you on the edge of your seat. So I liked that. And um, I also thought that the tag team title fatal four-way match was very good. Uh, that was... Um, better than I expected going in, and that was easily the second best match on the show, and, and the, I think that that was a pay-per-view quality match. Everything else was just okay, but at least the main event delivered, so I mean that right there uh, I think gives it a thumbs up rating at least. This one comes from Acadia MLS. Hey Aaron, love the show. Do you think that WWE dropped the ball with the unification match, rushing it into a secondary pay-per-view, and not trying to make something legendary and lengthy or something worth following? I am definitely intrigued as to why they rushed the unification match. When the rumors first started, I thought that they were going to do this match at WrestleMania, but they decided to have it take place at TLC. Now, maybe WWE has something big planned for WrestleMania, and that's why they rushed the match. I mean, we don't really know at this point uh, exactly what direction they're going in for WrestleMania 30. I'm hoping they have something bigger, because if they don't, then it's really going to be a head-scratcher as to why um, they gave this match away on uh, B pay-per-view. And to be honest, I don't think the buy rate's going to be anything significantly higher than what it's been in the past. Although, um, you know, I, I do give WWE credit. They did a very good job building up the match, and the final angle on Raw was really strong. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see how the buy rate is. But, um, yeah, one thinks that maybe it would have been a lot more effective to have this match at WrestleMania um, as historic as it's supposed to be. All right, this one comes from Kayfabe Candy S. With the crowd quieter than a fly fart, did the WWE make the right call having the pampered, undeserving golden boy Randy Orton get the win over John Cena? Now imagine Daniel Bryan holding up those titles and the hot crowd would react. Bad call. Well, maybe this is part of WWE's greater plan. Maybe at WrestleMania 30, we're going to see Daniel Bryan holding up the unified title. I mean, that remains to be seen. Um, with that being said, say what you will about Randy Orton, and clearly you're not a Randy Orton fan, but um, like I said, I'm glad WWE at least did a clean finish here. They had several pay-per-views with undecisive finishes and, you know, screw jobs, but this time Randy Orton won, and I, I suspected it going in. I mean, with the way that WWE was booking Randy Orton, they were kind of pushing him as the underdog in this match, and John Cena got the best of Orton on Raw the other week, and then at the Slammy Awards, Orton got laid out. So, I mean, that made me think Orton was going to win the match, and he did. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that this was the right decision. I mean, of the two guys, I think it was better that Orton won the match. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll get to see Orton versus CM Punk or Orton versus Bryan. And one of those guys will get the big win at WrestleMania. And um, the, the fact is, the WrestleMania win, for everything WWE's done with Daniel Bryan, I think that uh, the fans would forgive WWE if Bryan won the title at WrestleMania because WrestleMania is the big pay-per-view that everybody's watching. So, you know, that would really be something special if Daniel Bryan was to win the title at WrestleMania. All right, this one comes from Truth Seeker 17 Do you think that this is the end for The Shield? Not yet, but it's definitely leading up to the breakup, and um, I thought that that was well done, too. The match itself, I mean, you know, it was a handicap match, and it wasn't great or anything, but I did like the storyline uh, with the miscommunication and Roman Reigns with the bad eye accidentally spearing Dean Ambrose, and obviously this is going to start to lead to the breakup of The Shield. And, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was very well done, so I enjoyed it a lot, definitely. 
All right, this one comes from October's own ace. What did you think of Bobby Roode's title run? I think it was great, and I think he should have been pushed as the face of TNA as he was one of the few TNA-made wrestlers. I definitely agree with you with that. I enjoyed Bobby Roode's title run, and I'm glad that they gave him an extended run with the title. He was the longest reigning TNA champion in history, and I'm all for TNA pushing homegrown talent. I wish he was marketed better, but all things considered, I like what they've done with Bobby Roode in recent years, and I've enjoyed the feud he's had with Kurt Angle, and I think that they've been using him very well overall. So, you know, no real issues with how TNA has handled Bobby Roode, and um, he's definitely a guy that I think could make it in WWE if given the opportunity. Really talented guy, and I'm glad that he's had success in TNA, absolutely. All right, this one comes from Gravy Sticks. Looking back at Triple H's career and what he's done, how much do you think his talent did for his career versus his know-how in aligning himself with the right people? Remember, the Raw is Triple H period, right? LOL. Well, it definitely helps to have friends in high places, no question. Triple H, he buddied up to the right people. He was friends with Shawn Michaels, who was one of the top guys in WWE, not just in the ring, but also politically. And then he got with... Vince McMahon's daughter, he was married to the boss's daughter, still is to this day, and uh, that's definitely helped him a lot, but uh, with that being said, you know, I think Triple H does get a bit of a bad rep because of his political position, but um, in my opinion, Triple H has earned his spot in WWE over the years. Going back to the mid-90s, I remember the, the hog pen match he had with Henry Godwin, and he was taking all those bumps in the slop and, and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, way back then, I thought that he had a lot of potential to be a major star. And, um, you know, during the period with DX and The Nation, I thought that, you know, he was getting better on the mic. And um, the match he had with, Trip with um, excuse me, with The Rock at SummerSlam 98, I mean, that was a tremendous match. And that, that was um, a career-defining match for both guys, and especially Triple H. He won the Intercontinental title on that night. And, um, you know, I feel that he was a guy that busted his ass and worked his way up. And, you know, he's one of those guys that dedicates his life to the business. And you can't really fault the guy uh, for, for giving everything he has to the industry. And that's what Triple H does. And, um, yeah, maybe he has a bit of an ego. Maybe he's a bit insecure. Maybe he does things to make himself look good. But, um, you know, a lot of guys in the wrestling business have a huge ego. It, it's nothing new. Uh, we've seen plenty of guys over the years like that. So, I mean, whatever. Uh, Triple H, in my opinion, uh, is an all-around great performer, one of the best. All right, this one comes from BMU989. Big fan of the show. Thank you for that. Here's my questions. Hope to have it answered in video. With the Royal Rumble coming up soon, what are your top five Royal Rumble matches? Second question, what do you think is WWE's big announcement at Las Vegas uh, coming soon from Moody? Um, as far as my favorite Royal Rumble matches, number one, no question for me, would be the 1992 Royal Rumble with Ric Flair winning um, Bobby Heenan's commentary. I've talked about it before. Excellent Royal Rumble match. Um, off the top of my head, um, even though I didn't like the 95 Rumble, uh, Shawn Michaels winning that final segment with the Bulldog was great. And um, the 2007 Royal Rumble with um, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker at the end, I mean, that was one of the best Royal Rumble finishes ever. And um, the 2008 Rumble was another good one with John Cena making his surprise return. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll say, uh, even though I don't think a lot of people would agree with me, well, you know what? I'll, I'll, I was going to mention the 99 Rumble because I was there, but, you know, I don't think that that was really a great Rumble, and it was kind of ridiculous with um, Stone Cold and Vince uh, not even being involved in the match and, and leaving the building and all that stuff. Um, I would say probably the 2001 Rumble with Kane going on a rampage, and the only thing I didn't like about that one was... Um, What's his name? Drew Carey getting involved. I thought that that was dumb. And uh, the 2002 Rumble with uh, the surprise returns. Well, not really surprise returns. They were announced in advance, but Mr. Perfect and um, Gold Dust, Val Venus, Godfather, all of them coming back. And, uh, you know, that was a very star studded Rumble with Triple H, Stone Cold, and Kurt Angle, and all those guys. So those would be my top five. All right, this one comes from Big NH. 
Hey Aaron, I'm from Portugal and I love the show. If Jeff Hardy returned to WWE, would you like to see him as a heel or as a face? Please answer in video. Um, this is an easy one. Definitely a face. I think that Jeff Hardy as a heel just doesn't work. I think it flopped in TNA. Um, Jeff Hardy is a guy that you just naturally want to cheer for. He's an underdog-like character and he does all the flashy high-flying moves. And um, let's be honest, he's not the best promo guy. And uh, you really need to be good on the mic to be an effective heel, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, Jeff Hardy, he, he's best off being a baby face. And uh, that's what people want from him. They want him to go out there and be the charismatic enigma and take all the risks and do all the high flying. Um, so, you know, and when he comes back, he's going to be cheered anyway. So um, really no point in, in trying to make him a heel. And, you know, WWE won't do that because... The bottom line is they want money, and Jeff Hardy's a huge merchandise seller. So it's a no-brainer to have him as babyface. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No dq and a video. Trying to get this up quickly, uh, coming off the WWE TLC pay-per-view. Let me know what you thought about the pay-per-view. Leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, subscribe. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the latest breaking news. And there's a lot of news going on from TLC. So stay tuned to NoDQ.com, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday for another edition of No dq and a video.